Joining me now with more is the former interim leader of the Conservative Party, Ronna Ambrose. She's also the chair of the Women's Business Council of Can Canada. Ronna, good morning. Great to see you. Good morning. Good to see you too. So I read your op-ed in the Globe and Mail, and I'm wondering, why did you want to speak out on this issue? Oh, well, I think I, I, think I just add my voice to many voices that uh, are just horrified, disgusted, shocked by the behavior of this board and management of Hockey Canada. You know, when you, the fact that they continue to fight to stay in their jobs is, is just beyond comprehension. They're doing so much damage to this organization. They're doing damage to the sport of hockey. They're doing damage to, uh, to the reputation of this institution and to sport in general by their conduct. And you also say that it shows a lack of understanding towards the whole issue around sexual abuse, sexual assault. And, and I want you to talk a little bit more about that and, and why you feel their approach to this issue uh, is all wrong. Well, let's remember, uh, when, we, when we talk about bringing in new leadership on this issue, these are the same people who are sitting there today refusing to leave their positions who took registration money from hockey parents across Canada, put it into a secretive fund that had no transparency to be used to pay off settlements for women who were sexual assault, sexually assaulted by hockey players. And the process that was used was they had a third party come in, but it was not public, not transparent. Interviews were, were done. Harm was found to have been, uh, there was harm ha um, found to have ha happened and money was paid out of these funds. But the players themselves were never held accountable, never interviewed, never part of the process. So this is a, a process that lacked transparency, honesty, accountability, completely not what you call for in a situation like this where allegations of abuse or sexual assault come forward. It's highly unusual to be dealt with this way, especially in an organization like Hockey Canada that's dealing with you know, minors, and amateurs in sport and families. I mean, this is settling sexual assault allegations is not part of Hockey Canada's mandate. When that came out, they should have resigned at that point. The board should have been reconstituted with people that understand these issues, who could guide them through this difficult time of crisis in the organization. But instead, they've dug in, they've become defensive, secretive. Um, it's, it's actually, it's shocking. So. I don't know who else needs to weigh in. The prime minister has weighed in. Yep. They've lost most of their sponsorship and they continue to be defensive. But this is the same group that set up this secretive fund um, and they continue to defend their actions. And at the end of the day, their job is to also protect the reputation of this organization. And so the right thing to do would be for them to step down and be replaced by people that can handle these issues. They're very complex issues handle the transformation that needs to happen in the organization. Rana, what do you make of what's been happening in Ottawa? And did you agree? Because we seem to see solidarity within every, with all parties now. We've got the Prime Minister yesterday, as you pointed out, um, saying it should be essentially dismantled, that maybe there should be a new organization created. What do you think of what's happening with the questions that are being put towards um, or that are being asked in that committee? What do you make of it? Well, I think Hockey Canada's leadership has done a terrible job representing any type of transformation that they think that they can <laughs> they can affect. Um, it's really time for them to go. I don't think you have to dismantle the organization, but that's where we're at because these people will not let go of the privilege and power of these positions. And they have to. If they want to do what's right by the organization and the sport, they have got to let go, but they refuse to. So now we're thinking about creating an entire new organization. I don't think we have to do that. I think we need to bring in the right people to, to um, create confidence in the institution. Again, institutions can be reformed, but you have to have the right people leading them. And these are, these are not the right people. The same people that are sitting around that table are the people that thought it was okay to create a secretive fund that no one knew about from hockey registrations to pay off um, women who were sexually assaulted by hockey players. That's not the way you handle these type of issues. So they did wrong right from the beginning. Now that we know that, and now that they understand, I, th I hope they understand, they did. They handled that completely inappropriately. They should have resigned then, but they just continue to defend their actions. So my hope is that now with all of this pressure, 
they will find a, the board will will appoint a new chair that has expertise, can help bring in a new board, and then the board can replace the management with the right type of people to guide the organization through an action plan or whatever it is that needs to happen to um, create the kind of transformation and accountability and transparency around these kinds of issues.